recently posted a video of my Eskar FRA 400 platform, and I thought I'd do another video tour looking at my Astrophysics 130 millimeter Starfire telescope platform. This was a telescope that was built back in 2003, and I picked it up used from a gentleman who had a few of these pieces and was no longer using them, and I happened to meet him when I sold him a lens on eBay, and we worked out a deal. We started off with the main tube assembly here, which of course is the uh, Astrophysics 130 EDT. Now this one's a little bit different, and it has an F ratio of F8.35. It's not a super fast telescope. It was sold to be something like between a wide field scope and, an, a, and a planetary scope. And for me, this works out well for galaxy work because it has a focal length of about 1050, and it's the longest focal length I have right now that I'm working with. This particular scope comes back with its original focuser, and I've got a Pegasus Astro Focus Cube 2, which is a pretty strong and pretty nicely engineered focus motor on it, which works well with the size of the scope and the weights that I'm dealing with. Mounted behind that, you can see a Pegasus Astro Falcon camera rotator. I really like working with the camera rotators, and I have one on each of the platforms that I'm working with. Behind it is my most capable camera right now. You can't really see it very well from this particular angle, but this is a ZWO ASI 2600 MM Pro, a mono camera, new generation, and it's a very sensitive camera, and I've been very impressed with the results I've gotten with it. Mounted on the front of it, of course, is an electronic filter wheel. This one happens to be a 7x36 wheel, and I have 36 millimeter unmounted filters in there. These are a set of astronomics for narrowband, and, and I have ZWO LRGB filters in there for doing LRGB imaging. On the top of the scope, I have a Teleview TV76, which I'm currently using as a... Uh, as a guide scope. Now, originally my intent here was to put another camera on here and be able to do wide field or narrow field, uh, but I really haven't used it that way. But as part of setting that up, I did put its own focus motor on there, and I do use that for autofocusing the guide scope, which gives me nice crisp stars to use when I'm trying to guide. The entire assembly is mounted on an iOptron CM60 mount. Um, I've really liked the CM60 mount series. They've been workhorses for me. I have two of them. They've handled these large scopes really well, and I get good guiding from them and excellent results. In order to handle this load, I had to put an extra counterweight on, and I did end up getting this auxiliary weight so that I can do Z-axis tweaking of the uh, uh, balance of the system. And then, because I'm setting up in my driveway every night, I did want to have some kind of a way of doing polar alignment, so I have a polar alignment camera. This is the Pole Master, and this makes it very simple to set up the scope and get good solid alignments. On the other side here you can see I have another counterweight which is also set up for Z axis balancing so I can get this thing tweaked in and it does a very nice job with the balancing. On the top here I have Pegasus Astro pocket power box unit, which is basically used to drive my DC distribution, at least a portion of my DC power distribution. And also I have two lines coming off, which is handling the dew straps that I have in here. And of course, in order for the dew straps to be driven automatically by the power box, there's an environmental module, which I have mounted back here. On the back of the unit in here is an industrial strength StarTech 7 slot USB hub. This is a powered hub. And if you see, <laughs> Every device that's USB plugs into there, and that's what feeds back into the uh, laptop computer, which is driving this whole thing. So I have two lines that come into the computer. You know, one is a USB line, and the other is a power line. The power line is coming from a, a 30 amp uh, solid state switching power supply. I come up to a power pole distribution, and there's a few taps I make off of this to handle power. One of these goes right up to the mount so that I've got power going to the mount. Another one goes back to the PC Power Box Junior. And then of course I have the feed coming in that's distributing all of this. In the back here you can see the four different DC power feeds. These are being used to run two focus motors. It's also being used to handle the Falcon rotator. And it's also powering the hub right here. The whole mount is on an iOpton tripe here 
which is a very steady mount. It's easy to set up, it's easy to balance, and I use my telescope mover and lifter because I can slide it right up to the post here, strap it on, and it lifts the entire telescope. And then using a set of pneumatic tires, I can roll this into the garage and set it back down. And so my larger scopes can be moved very easily and dropped into the driveway into precise locations where I have spots painted on the driveway, which have me pretty much set up for an evening to go forward. This telescope is now over 20 years old, and for a long time it was sitting in a box. So it's really nice to have the scope out. It's a, it has excellent optics and a really crisp image. And I was really glad to be able to take it and put it on a modern mount, add on some good cameras, and then a combination of a longer focal length um, and the more sensitive 2600 based mono camera does a really nice job when I go after the galaxies. It's not optimal, but it's the best and the longest focal length I have. And this is the one I tend to use when I'm going after the small and fuzzy galaxies.